So you just started keto and your cholesterol is off the charts. What do you do? Okay. There's a couple important things you need to know. Number one, and this was in 2018, the new guidelines by the American Heart Association. Okay. This is brand new. They said total cholesterol is not significantly associated with heart disease. Okay. That's the new finding. They just found out. Looking at your total cholesterol doesn't really give you a lot of information with, in relationship to predicting heart disease. Okay, that's number one. Number two, your body makes 75%. 25% comes from diet. Why do we need cholesterol? Why does your body make it? To make hormones, sex hormones, cell membranes, bile to help you digest fat, and vitamin D, which is very, very crucial. And this is why when people take cholesterol drugs that block cholesterol, as in statins, they have a lot of side effects relating to these right here, which we, we're not going to get into. Now, what I did is I took my wife Karen's report Okay, that I'm going to show you. I'm going to walk you through this. This is an actual report uh, done 11-15-2019. And we checked the total cholesterol the LDL, the HDL, triglycerides, and we checked several other things because I always recommend when you get a cholesterol test, you get an advanced lipid profile, an advanced test that measures the two different types of LDL, okay, which we're going to cover. Now, check this out. This is what we found. Her total cholesterol was 261. Normal is below 200. So this is too high, right? So immediately you're probably going to freak out unless you understand that this total cholesterol is not the cholesterol that's floating through your arteries. It can't. It doesn't mix well with blood. It has to be packaged in a protein. So the total cholesterol is really all these other things combined. Okay? So we have LDL, which is low-density lipo proteins, because you need a protein kind of a sac to push it through the blood. Then we have high density lipoprotein. Okay. So really, you know, take the cholesterol and just put it to the side right now. All right. So we know the cholesterol is high. We also know her LDL. Look at that. It should be below 100. It's 195. It's more than double where it should be. HDL, should be greater than 50 because you want that higher because that's the cholesterol coming from the cells back onto the liver. Okay, it's not the LDL from the liver to the cells, it's coming back the other way. Hers was really good, 71. Triglycerides, less than 100, hers were 66. So this is where it's coming from right here. But thank goodness we did a test that goes a little bit deeper and we measured two types of. LDL. One is the large buoyant type of LDL, which is kind of large and fluffy as it goes through the artery. And number two, we measured the small dense LDL particles. Okay. So I want to focus on this one right here, small dense. So the way it's worded on the cholesterol test is this right here, SDLDL-C, standing for small density. All right, here we go. Here's Karen's report. We have her name, we have the date, and we have the total cholesterol, which is 261, right? Check that out right there. And the second one that's high, LDLC, that stands for uh, LDL cholesterol, it's 195, okay? If we take a look on the second page right here, look at this. The LDL is 2,128, right? But let's narrow in on this one type of LDL, SDLDL-C. That's a small, dense, low-density lipoprotein. This is the one that's dangerous, and it's actually 26 within the normal range. It's optimal. So guess what this means? It means that Karen's high level of LDL is not the small, dense type. It is the large, buoyant type. And it's the small dense type that creates the damage. It's one of the better markers for predicting heart problems. It's one of the best indicators for detecting inflammation deep inside 
of the arteries. All right, so let me just explain the inside of the arteries. So I got this really good analogy from a Dr. Sanjay Gupta on one of his uh, YouTube videos uh, using a frying pan, right? So it's a really great example of what happens on the inside of your arteries. So here we have this non-stick frying pan, okay? So you fry something on here, you put some fat on there, and it doesn't stick, right? And you rub it or you scratch this and you get rid of this layer, the fat will start to stick. Here's what you need to know. Cholesterol is not going to affect the inside of the arteries unless there's first some type of lesion, some type of erosion on the inside of the arteries where the small dense type LDL can then penetrate because they're small and start developing placking. So the question is, why did Karen have such high cholesterol and such high LDL? And also, why did she have more of the large buoyant type versus the small dense type? And that's simply because of this. This comes from a high carb diet. It comes from consuming the wrong types of foods. When you're doing a healthy version of keto, where you're doing higher fats, lower carb, moderate protein, guess what? You're going to get into ketosis. You're going to start burning fat. And a fat cell is composed of mostly triglycerides and cholesterol. So that cholesterol has to come out. It has to be mobilized. So you can have certain times or transitional periods where your cholesterol goes up and it goes down. But as long as you keep your carbs low, you're going to get more of this type of cholesterol. And this is why I always recommend doing an advanced lipid profile, not just your regular test that doesn't tell you very much information. And so getting back to the arteries, there's various things that cause inflammation in addition to the glucose and the sugar, which is a kind of a, most people know that. Seed oils, a lot of corn oil, canola, soy, cottonseed oil, and so many different foods, uh, mayonnaise, salad dressings, going out to dinner, eating fried foods, very inflammatory. Smoking creates inflammation. Junk food creates inflammation. And also, when you're deficient in vitamin E, and you become deficient in vitamin E when you start consuming refined flour products, and that would be in the form of breads and pastas, cereal, crackers, biscuits, things like that, you start becoming depleted of vitamin E, which is the protective antioxidant to protect the inside of the arteries. And by the way, if you have any problems with the inside of your artery, the best vitamin E to take is not tocopherols, it's tocotrienols, okay? That's the one that you would want to help protect the inside of that layer. So now let's take a look inside the artery and get a visual of what can happen. So we're looking here at the inside of an artery. This tiny layer on the inside of the artery is called the endothelium. And this layer controls the tone of your blood vessel. It can increase the blood pressure. It can decrease the blood pressure. It can make the artery thicker or more elastic, but it's very sensitive to sugar, especially chronic sugar. I'm talking about chronic glucose. An average person in America consumes between 250 to 350 grams of glucose. That is at least 13 to 15 times what is normal. So when you expose the inside of your artery to that much glucose, what's going to happen, we're going to get this oxidation effect. It's like rusting out the inside of your arteries. Now what happens next is the body's response to an injury. We're going to get inflammation. We're going to get calcium that's going to come in there and start building up and start to, to act as a band-aid. We're also going to get cholesterol that actually mixes in there and acts as a band-aid. We're also going to get uh, fibrous tissue that's going to act as a band-aid. Altogether, this band-aid that's created from calcium, protein, and cholesterol is going to start to form a clot. And as that artery becomes more obstructed, the blood flow backs up and you start getting a diminished flow of blood. So what does blood do? It carries oxygen and nutrition. So now we not only starve off oxygen to the tissues, we starve off nutrition. And if that blood vessel turns into a capillary and ends up in the bottom of your feet, you'll get peripheral neuropathy, numbness, burning, tingling. If that artery is the coronary artery that goes to your heart, your heart muscle will start to cramp. 
as an angina and eventually a heart attack. If that clot breaks off, goes up to your brain and starts shutting off oxygen into your brain, you get a stroke. And so all of this can be completely prevented just by getting the sugar out of the diet. So if you're enjoying this content, go ahead and share it with someone that could really benefit from it.